we're loaded today. We've got a table full of guns here with one simple mission for today's video. We have a target clear out there at 300 yards and we're aiming for the exact same spot on the target. All these guns are zeroed at 100 yards and we wanna see what the bullet drop is for each. And as we go, we're gonna show, talk about the flattest shooting cartridges out to different distances and some pretty cool things you can do to get a gun to shoot a lot more flat. Let's get started. Honey, you are beginning with this gun. What is it? This is the 350, the legend. I gotta learn all these names. And the funniest thing about this gun is the recoil pad they named the TSA. Like, pretty obvious that this is not a made in the USA brand when they <laughs> name it after the security that everybody's annoyed by at the airport. Maybe TSA recoil good. pad. All right, so we'll set you up. So the 350 Legend, common people are gonna use for deer hunting and stuff. Okay, there's our target, clear down there. But Emily is zeroed for 100 yards. No adjustment to the scope. I'm We're going to see what the bullet drop is. I'm going to do so good. <gasps> it still is so startling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Emily aimed for the... Oh, I don't see a hole. Did you hit it? Well, oh, look. <laughs> Clear down here. So 300 yards with the 300, 350 legend, that bullet dropped all that distance. That's like over four feet of drop. So the 350 legend is not intended to be a long range cartridge, right? It's intended to intentionally be a short range, not very flat shooting cartridge because it's for kind of, it's a straight wall cartridge. It's for use in areas where you don't want a bullet flying too far if you're kind of um, near other people and stuff hunting. But let's compare that to a 6.5 Creedmoor and see where it lands up. Okay, so here it is. So this is a GRS rifle stock. I think this one's called the Bifrost. Um, and the cool thing is they're all adjustable. You press the button there, you can adjust length of pole and everything, and you're set. <laughs> and then the hand grip just kind of fits your hand. It has fits oh, in yeah. really nice. This is the one where you said it's like it feels home. like at home. Yeah, baby. Okay, so here's our first impact. This is the 350 Legend. All that drop just in 300 yards. The 6.5 Creedmoor hits right here. So that's how much a 6.5 Creedmoor drops at 300 yards. It's substantial. If you're not taking, you know, taking that into account when hunting, you're gonna miss at 300 yards. But it's flying so much flatter. It's a lighter weight bullet and it's going more faster and it has a higher BC. We gotta talk about that in a second. All right, so why did the 6.5 Creedmoor drop so much less than the 350 Legend? Well, if you look, you see a couple things right off the bat. You see the 6.5 Creedmoor is shooting a much more long, sleek, aerodynamic bullet compared to the 350 Legend. That thing's just not gonna cut the wind at all. It's got a flat nose, a flat base on the, on the back of it. Then you look at the boxes of ammo and we see that the 6.5 Creedmoor, you know, whatever, it's usually flying around 2,700 feet per second, 2,710, while the 350 Legend is only going at 2,100 feet per second. So we just highlighted the two different things that, like, that's it. It's, it's only these two things that are going to impact how flat a, a cartridge goes. The first thing is the velocity. All else equal, obviously the faster cartridge is go going to race down there um, at a flatter with less bullet drop, right? Because gravity has less time to, a to act on it, right? Then the second thing is the BC. So if you're newer, so BC is the ballistics coefficient and it's a number. You'll get it on the box of your cartridge. It'll say either G1 BC or G7 BC. And the, you want the higher, the higher number. The higher the number is, the more sleek and aerodynamic it is but it's not just the aerodynamics of the bullet. It also takes into account the weight of the projectile. All else equal, you want the heavier bullet. The heavier bullet is going to carry that energy faster. It's like if you're having a contest, see who can throw a rock the furthest. If you get a tiny little pebble, you say, you know, you probably can throw it a little bit faster when it exits your hand, it's probably moving faster. 
than if you got a bigger rock to throw. The b bigger rock's have weighing down your hand a little bit, right? But the heavier rock is gonna carry that energy way further. So that's it. It's just velocity and BC, that's it. That's all that matters for a flat, flat shooting cartridge. So let's look now at something interesting. So we shot a 350 Legends gonna drop a ton, a 6.5 Creedmoor. But now, do you wanna see the flattest shooting cartridge, period? The flattest shooting common cartridge is coming. I'll give you a hint. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess what it is? 22 Creedmoor? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so this gun I'm so excited about. This is from Horizon Firearms. This one is called the Vandal X. First thing is it has a tiny little 18 inch barrel, deep flutes on the barrel. And when I opened the box, I, so I wasn't really familiar with Horizon Firearms. The 22 Creedmoor got announced. Um, and I talked about the 22 Creedmoor and then I saw Horizon Firearms I had it and I was like, I, I don't even know what this is. And when I opened the box, I was like, what? Why didn't I know that this gun existed? Because it has a nice carbon fiber stock with modern stock lines. You know, you have a nice vertical grip, a flat fore end, you're using a trigger tech trigger. They have their stiller actions in there. Like, I don't know where this has been my whole life, but I'm really liking this gun. So I let's like shoot this. This, this here. This little flute. Yeah, Isn't looks that really neat? good. It's actually so. This is external rifling. You know how the barrel is rifled inside. Uh huh. So that's exterior rifling to uh, make it more accurate. Oh really? Yeah, works really well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, where am I aiming? The white line. White line again. Oh my gosh! Look how fast I was. That was good. Okay, now I put my hand here. Yep. It did scare me a little, but I'm getting better. Okay, 350 Legend, 6.5 Creedmoor. Wow, look at that. So this is the bullet drop of the 22 Creedmoor. I got it. Oh yeah, you, you're shooting really well. We're just barely to the side. 22 Creed. Okay, so we gotta talk about why I said that this is the flattest shooting common cartridge. Because it really depends on, you know, what load are we picking and what distance. Here are the, the flattest shooting common cartridges. And then you go out to 400 yards, 600 yards, and you see the, li the, sh the list shifts just barely, but they're pretty much all the same out to 600 yards. After 600 yards though, you'll see the top flattest shooting cartridges starts to change a little bit. And we need just more bullet weight, more BC, and the initial velocity meant a little bit less. Now, the 22 Creedmoor is incredibly flat shooting, but remember that this one from Horizon Firearms, this is a tiny 18 inch barrel. So the velocity we're getting is 2970 feet per second. If you had the, a longer barrel, you're getting, you know, 3,300 feet per second. But I love that. I'll take that compromise that, you know, maybe we could have gone up an inch or two, right? If we had the long barrel. To me, that's not even close to worth it because I want that little compact thing to go out coyote hunting. It's shooting so flat out to 300 yards um, that I would rather have the, the, the compact features. But we're about to see something about barrel length that... I think will really surprise you. Look right here. This is the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now let's shoot a 6.5 PRC at it. 6.5 PRC, super popular. Everybody's loving the 6.5 PRC. It's basically a 6.5 Creedmoor that shoots about 200 feet per second faster. They're generally shooting the same bullets. Um, but a lot of people say, and it wouldn't be my first choice, but a lot of people say if you're shooting, you know, the 6.5 PRC, now we're getting into, you know, an elk kind of cartridge. Um, I don't know about that, but it is shooting faster than the Creedmoor. Let's see what the difference is on the board. Okay. All right, here we go with the 6.5 PRC. Now, this is shooting faster. Same, exact same bullet as the Creedmoor. No change in the bullet at all. But let's see where this lands. Now we got the real sharpshooter on the gun. I don't know about that, but... I do. 
So I made the claim that the 22 Creedmoor is the flattest shooting cartridge. Let's kind of break that apart a little bit because there's so much nuance here. You know, which load, what distance are we shooting, what barrel length, all that kind of stuff. Here's my list of kind of the most common cartridges, you know, your 270, 30 not the weird stuff. Then go out to 600 yards. And that's where I thought, ah, you know, it's a light little bullet. It's going to start to fall off, right? But still, it's pegged. It is the flattest shooting cartridge out to 600 yards. Okay, now this is a little bit of a two different list. Now, this is looking at 90 different cartridges that we track, even some of the more oddball, less common cartridges. And on that list, out to 500 yards, the 22 Creedmoor comes in at number three, uh, just beat by the 6.5 300 Weatherby the tw and the 26 Nosler. And then it's right there, the 22 Creedmoor. Now, the question comes in like, wait a minute, how does the 22 Creedmoor beat like a 220 Swift that's shooting faster? And it's because it's shooting longer, higher BC bullets uh, that just aren't dropping uh, quite as much uh, from the wind drag. And so I think this cartridge is really unique. Uh, it really is something special. It's taking the 6.5 Creedmoor case um, and just putting a smaller bullet, but still decently high BC in there. So you get something that's awesome for coyotes, but it's also an 80 grain bullet. You know, you're fine shooting deer in states where it's legal, by the way. You got to, you know, some states it may not be legal to shoot um, a deer with less than a 243. But in, I would, I think most states, you're okay to hunt with a hunt deer. Um, and people have shot bigger. I talked to the guy the other day who said he killed a bull elk with a 22 Creedmoor. Um, I would not recommend that, but it's incredible um, what this little thing can do. 22 Creedmoor is kind of just hitting the market. It's been a wildcat before. Now it's getting Sammy approval. Hornady is making ammo. We're shooting, you know, factory Hornady ammo here and great guns from Horizon Firearms and others. So 22 Creedmoor is pretty awesome if you're looking for the flattest shooting. Now one that I've been looking forward to. So we have the 6.5 PRC up there. Remember that's in a shorter barrel, but now we're going to compare it to two other big hitters of the Western hunt. The first one is the 7 PRC. 7 PRC. This one's in the Ruger American Go Wild. This one has a longer barrel, so it's you know it's not going to be a perfect uh, comparison here. But I'm interested to see what that does. And the other that has some life breathed into it is this guy. It's the 6.8 Western. So you guys have asked in several times in YouTube lives and stuff, is 6.8 Western dead? And I've been saying, I think it might be. But Christensen, big props to Christensen, uh, has released a lot of 6.8 Western rifles on the market. And that is breathing new life into this cartridge that I think is awesome. Uh, and I hope it's enough that it, it will help it to kind of catch on. Oh, um, we hand me that pad behind you. What is that? Uh, okay, so we launched the backstop recoil pad. You guys were so awesome. I was very, very nervous about it. I just thought, oh man, I'm going to bring so many haters and stuff. I don't know that I saw a single negative comment about the backstop recoil pad. And the response was really really awesome uh, i'm absolutely thrilled with it but that means that a lot of my guns don't have any recoil pad on them at all right now oh um, my gosh <laughs> expanding to heck? expanding to other cartridges so that i don't kill myself i'm using this little sissy pad here um oh jim it. that's gonna hurt no it'll be fine with the pad just because we have them off so that we can pattern everything but let's get this going Gotta give the people their videos. They're not gonna wait. Oh, you are brave. Incoming. Cool. How's and now, that feel? I like 6.8 Western, man. That is such a cool cartridge. You think you might need a recoil pad? Maybe like a backstop? Might need a backstop recoil pad for everything. <laughs> We're gonna have it soon. Soon it's gonna be every rifle model. Ruger, if you would fix the feeding in your rifles, I would really appreciate it. Mm. Okay. Battle of the Western Rifles. 
6.5 PRC, 7 PRC versus 6.8 Western. We'll see how they did. What is that enormous scope you're looking through? Okay, this spotting scope, by the way, is something I want to highlight. So this is from Vector Optics. Um, I, we reviewed their scope in the best scope under a thousand. They make some great optics. I'm pretty excited about this for the price point. So it's expensive, it's, you know, I think around 1500, but compared to other price scopes or spotting scopes in this category, it is a bargain. Um, so this is the 20 to 80. Uh, so you have a huge zoom range. Like I can see individual bullet holes at 300 yards, pretty awesome. And so you just have your focus and magnification here. I love the form factor though that you know you have I, I don't know what they call this the prism anyway um, and then the kind of two sides here so it's pretty compact for a big old spotting scope the other thing i like about it is it has a reticle in here that's awesome because then if you're the spotter and somebody's shooting you don't have to say uh it's about two feet low i look in here and i can say oh no we're two mils low because i can see where the two mil line is and then i can just tell the shooter you're two mils low i'm pretty excited about it so check out that one vector optics this is the 20 to 80. okay we're going to talk about 68 western and 7 prc in a second but let's look at 6.5 Creedmoor and 7 PRC. You see vertically, there's only like an inch and a half of difference between them. So why, how could it be that the 6.5 PRC shooting 200, 250 feet per second faster is only making that much difference at 300 yards? It's because of the barrel length. So this Fierce Mountain Reaper that I'm shooting, I love that Fierce Mountain Reaper. Um, it has a short 20 inch barrel. And so a 20 inch barrel 6.5 PRC is pretty much the same thing as a 24, 26 inch barrel on a 6.5 Creedmoor. And so, you know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, the 6.5 PRC, that's the elk cartridge. Well, maybe even in a 24 inch barrel, but certainly not if you're shooting it in a short barrel, it turns it into a different cartridge. So who wins the shootout? Well, it's not, certainly not the 350 Legend. We come up to the 6.5 Creedmoor level up here. <laughs> And then 6.5 PRC, 6.8 Western, 7 PRC are pretty close. And then look though, whoop, the 22 Creedmoor way above. And again, remember, this is a short barrel 22 Creedmoor. I am really excited about that. And this particular gun. So this is the Vandal X from Horizon Firearms. It's a premium gun, you know, it's a, just barely over two grand. But you know, it's one you save up for. This is the kind of gun you pass down for your kids. It's just so compact in that little form factor, has that deep fluting on the barrel that just looks super cool. Modern stock lines. I am very excited about it and I am really, really ready to get on some coyotes this season. Thanks everybody, we'll see you in the next video.